Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial on creating a draggable circle using a React Native Skier. In this tutorial, we are going to build a simple app that allows you to move the red circle around using the screen and you're using here touch gestures. We're going to leverage the power of React Native Skier to create smooth and performant animations and we are also going to use React Native Reanimated to handle the gesture effectively. If you're looking forward to this tutorial, give it a like, subscribe and let's head over to it. So I'm starting off with a clean React Native app. You can use Expo in this case, this tutorial will work the same way. So in this case, we have React Native here. So we have the default text when you set up, uh, when you initialize your React Native app. So I'm just gonna delete everything, Control A, and then just React Native functional elements. So this is just like a snippet. We're just gonna take everything out and then we just left out with React Native and the style sheet. So I'm just gonna clean it up even more. So before we start, make sure that you have Node installed on your computer and also you have NPM or YAN or BAN installed in your machine. Also some familiarity as well with React Native will help a bit. A React Native project, our React Native project right now is ready to go. So we just need to install a few libraries. In this case, it's just, just two libraries. The first one is React Native Skier and the second one is React Native Reanimated. So this, that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm just gonna clear the terminal and then do an install, a fresh install of React Native Skier. To install React Native Skier, if you're using npm, so it'll be npm i, and then since it's coming from Shopify, it will be at Shopify slash React Native Skier. So that will install React Native Skier. Cool. So now that React Native Skier is installed, we're going to install React Native Reanimated. npm i react native reanimated so we're gonna let this install in this case it's done so since we're using react native reanimated we have to make some changes in our babel.config file in this case we have to add a plugin which is the reanimated slash plugin for those who are curious this allows us to use some of the worklets that are provided by our reactive reanimated re animated so that we can actually use a different thread when it comes to uh, more displaying or interacting with our animation. So that's what it does. So I'll link the link, I'll link a, a link to in the description so that you can actually find out further about why we have to do this. So this is for the UI thread essentially. Cool. Now that's done. So we can actually go back to our app.tsx and then here I'm just going to create a canvas. The canvas will contain basically our full animation cycle. So in the for the canvas we're gonna have a rectangle. So 
So we're gonna have, let's first fill, we're gonna fill the, with the background color, let's say of, we can start with red, and this is all coming from React, React Native Reanimated, from, from Ski, I mean. Okay, cool. So nothing will happen now. So let me just start up the server. So I'll go npm start and then clear the cache because I'm, I've installed React Native Reanimated. So let's let that go. And then we're gonna start the server, start the app right now. Press A for React Native using Android. If you're following along, we just got, got this error, and I realize here it should be plugins. So plugins, in this case, instead of like, uh, I think I had plugin first instance. So I'm just gonna go back here and then start the app again. Cool. Now that's going. Um, what, I'll, what I'll do now is that we gonna just add some styling to our canvas. Okay, I'm gonna. We're just gonna add some styling to our canvas. We want it to fill the full screen, and we also. can actually get rid of this right here. So we want our canvas to fill, in, to fill the old screen. And then what we also want is that we want to have, so we want to have like a, let's give it a width of 100%. The, the height can be auto. And then what we what we can do now is that we can actually add our circle now. In this case, we can just get a circle. We just import it. We want our circle to initially we can ha can have uh, these following properties. Okay, that works with me. So we can actually have the same color that we had before, which looked very nice. So that's your 120A 3D. Okay, it's cool. We can have this one to be red. Cool. So currently we have that cycle there, but we can't do anything with it. We can't move it or anything like that. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna give the we're gonna give certain features uh, to this canvas, which will enable us to see when a movement is happening. So we're gonna say on touch that. Okay, so that looks good. So we've got on touch that, on touch, on move, and, and on end. So we're just gonna console log those features and you're gonna see if we increase our console here. So I'm just gonna do a movement here and you can see it's actually logging that, that event. So let's remove the event and then let's do something. And you can see if when I move around in the canvas, it's actually registering and then when I end the movement, it's also re registering that. So that's pretty cool. So what we're gonna no need right now is that like, since we are registering that movement, we want to get the location of that. So, so let's do something different here. Let's, instead of hard coding this, the location of this circle, let's make it dynamic and we're gonna use 
reanimated for that. So we're gonna say circle location x and then we can use uh, use set value and then we're still gonna give it like 200 in fact we can and then we're gonna have the y location then these values are gonna be this those set values that we have there Nothing will change unless we change the location there and you'll see the circle. If we do that. And yeah, we can see that the circle moved since we moved it to 20. And then what we want to do now is that we want to have a function which will allow us to capture that movement here. So when a movement happens, we want to be able to capture that movement. So in this case, we're going to have a, fu a new function that we're gonna call handle move, const handle move event. So this function is going to be basically we're using the, like we're going to use the workloads for, for this. And then what, what it's going to do is that basically you have those, those values, which are currently hard coded, which are, if, are values in the, in this, in this, in the canvas. So we actually want the ones that are coming from the event. So we're just going to, take the event and then this is coming from Cheshire responder okay cool so we're just gonna grab the x location and the y location from the event. So we're gonna go location x and location y. This is gonna be coming from the native event. Then we're gonna just put it to here, put it to there. Cool. And then we're just gonna now add this to our to our own start. We're just gonna take that event, and then you can already see like now when I click on on a place, we actually see the movement and it's going to wherever the event is happening or that location, and then we're gonna just also then on move. We're gonna set the on move to that handle handle move event so that means it's going to run the function whenever there's a movement and just like that you have this smooth animation uh, using react native skier so if you enjoyed this tutorial give it a like subscribe and if you're looking forward to part two of this tutorial whereby we're going to have two simulators or emulators and then we're gonna share the same movement across the two devices using web sockets if you're looking forward to that video give this channel a like subscribe and you'll be able to see this event the new video when i upload it cool guys have a great one the link to the code will be in the description like always cheers y'all have a great one